Okay, so let's try number one. It says solve each equation for the principal values. So as a reminder, um, sine and tangents are just quadrants one and four. Cosine is just quadrants one and two. Okay, so basically just solve the equation and we'll worry about the principal values later. So try number one. So 1 over root 2 is the same thing as what? Yeah, root 2 over 2, right? And positive sign, we know it has to be first quadrant because between 1 and 4, fourth quadrant will be negative sign. So it's just x equals what? Pi over 4. The reason why is because this is not in rationalized form. So what if I multiply the top and bottom by root 2 over root 2? So if I rationalize the denominator, I can always multiply the top and bottom by the same value and not change anything. So 1 times root 2 is root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. So 1 over root 2 is the same thing as root 2 over 2. Okay. Mm -hmm. Could you not use the power of 4 because we're only looking at the first and second? First and fourth. That's right. We're only looking at first and fourth. Uh, we only look at fourth quadrant if we're dealing with a negative sign, right? But here, positive sign, we're choosing just between one and four. Okay. Or just one. Okay, try number two. And after you get done with two, just skip three. Three is a little bit strange. Um, let's just do two and four. Okay. Yes. The sign is like capital, the, the whole unit circle, but it's like Well, yeah, but they, uh, yeah, usually uppercase should be, um, would indicate that we're dealing with principal values, but the direction says principal values. So okay. from there, we're just reading the direction. But yeah, normally it should be uppercase. Cosine is negative, so we're we're looking at which quadrant now? Second. Second, yeah. Principal values, we're choosing either between one and two. So what's x equal to? That will cause cosine to be negative one half. Uh, two power three, yeah. So variations of one half will be power over three. Second quadrant will be two power over three. Okay, skip three and go to four. All right, we may want to go through some fact right here. So bring everything over to one side.
GCF cosine of X. If I factor a cosine of X, that means I'm I need to divide it out. So I know what the leftover term will be. Cosine squared over cosine is cosine X minus one. Okay, where's cosine of x equal to zero? Yeah, it's just pi over two because we're only looking at between zero and pi. Where's cosine equal to one? Just at zero because we're only looking at between zero and between zero to pi. Okay, any questions out there for? All right, number five, you have a factoring problem here. Uh, it says to pre uh, present your answers uh, in terms of degrees. So just do degrees for now. On the test, it'll all be radians. Okay, but just for now, let's just we can, I mean, if you want to re represent your answers in terms of radians, that's fine. But um, you can just use unit circle values, right? So, so number five looks like it's set up and ready for us to do factoring. You want to use x's first to factor, and then bring cosine in, that's fine. If you choose to factor in terms of x, then think as think in terms of 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. Multiply to be negative 4, adds up to be 2. Sorry, adds up to be 3. So 4 and negative 1 will fit that criteria. 4 for 2 is 2. Negative one half. Once you get your factored form nice and ready in terms of X, then you can bring cosine back in. And now you can just set both parentheses equal to zero. So are you good with four and negative one here? OK, so uh, we have to worry about uh, leading coefficient of two. So I have to make sure I reduce fractions if I can. So four over two reduces to be two. So I put a two here, two there. Negative one half doesn't reduce, so I leave it as negative one half. Yeah, so we always try to reduce the fraction if we can before we put it back in. And then if we have any leftover denominator, you can pull that in front of the variable. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And while we're for the bottom, why would uh, it be x plus 2 instead of x plus 4? Because we've already reduced the fraction. Oh, so it stays that way. Right, stays that way, yeah. Okay. So we have the 2 there as a reminder that we got to make some adjustments. Now, this is a 1. If it was just x squared, then we wouldn't have to worry about anything at all. Mm -hmm. But that 2 forces us to kind of resolve that situation. Okay. Okay, so when is cosine equal to negative two? 
undefined, right? Cosine is only going to oscillate between negative 1 and 1. Okay, where's cosine equal to 1 half? Six. Yeah. Yeah, pi over 3, which degree wise is 60 degrees. Oh, but it's also asking for. Yeah, so right, so 5 pi over 3, that means I'm subtracting 60 degrees from 360, which is 300, right? Number six, cosine tangent equals one half. Now we gotta be careful here. We can't just set cosine equal to one half and tangent equal to one half. We can't set both parts equal to the other side unless the other side is simply a zero. Okay, so here we gotta go through another route. What what could we do? Any idea? on that left side. Yeah, let's get that tangent to be something easier to work with, right? We know that we can always get everything in terms of sine and cosine. Tangent can be written as sine over cosine. The cosines cancels out nicely. So we're simply just asking when is sine equal to one half? First and second quadrant, right? Positive one half. Variations of what? Pi over six, which degree wise is 30. And the second quadrant, if you think in terms of Reference angle 180 minus 30, that's 150, right? Number seven, you see sine and cosine involved, but we know that. Typically, we would like to get everything in terms of one trick function. So anytime we see a, a way that an identity could be used, that cosine squared can be rewritten in terms of sine, and we can go through factoring like how we did with number five. So let's play with that cosine squared. Okay, I would like to move it, distribute uh, or get rid of the parentheses, move everything over to one side. And now we can think in terms of factoring, right? Multiplies to be negative two, adds up to be one. Two and negative one. Bring sine back into your expression and then look for your x values. When is sine equal to negative two? None. When is sine equal to one? Yeah. 
pi over 2, which we know degree wise is pi over 3. All right, bottom of the page. What opportunity do you see for number eight? How would you start this off? Identity. Yep, let's evolve an identity because we know that there's a relationship between cotangent and cosecant. Get cotangent in terms of cosecant, and then everything will be in terms of one trig function, and then you can factor it. So once I get everything set, you could think in terms of cosecant, or you can change it to what? Sine, right? So cosecant of x equal 2 is the same thing as sine equals 1 half. Cosecant of negative 1 is the same thing as sine equals 2. Still negative 1, right? If I flip negative 1, I still get 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. Questions with eight. Okay, number nine, you got some double angle identity there to apply.
So number nine, we strategically choose the one minus two sine squared, even though there are three options for cosine two X. We look at the rest of the problem and we see, well, I have sine here, so it's be most convenient if I can just get everything in terms of sine. Now we should be able to move some things around and get everything equal to zero, right? Factor. Any questions? Any step along the way here? Okay, next step looks like we don't have to go through trinomial factoring, just have to take out a GCF because the ones can cancel out. Take sine x from both terms. I'm left with two sine x plus one. I said each equal to zero. Sine is, uh, sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrants, so variations of pi over six. Number 10, double angle identity. Get everything over to one side, GCF, factor, and then solve. Okay, so cosine is negative in the second and third quadrant. Variations of pi over three.
Okay, next page, number 11. Whenever you guys are ready. All right, anybody still need this page? Okay, now number 11, it looks, seems kind of strange because you're looking at this saying, well, I don't have any identity and I don't have a GCF, I can't rewrite anything. So there's a kind of a special way to deal with this. Um, I'm gonna let sine x equals negative cosine x. I'm gonna convert this into something else. Now, normally we don't wanna be dividing a trig function and making it go away. But here we're just rewriting into a different form. What happens if I were to divide both sides by cosine? A tangent. So that's kind of the trick. Whenever you have sine equals cosine or cosine equals sine, the, the strategy there is, is you can take advantage of that tangent property, tangent uh, relationship, and use that to kind of help us move, move forward, um, kind of make us, allow us to move forward. So if I divide both sides by cosine, I'm not getting rid of the cosine. I'm really just converting that cosine into something else. But that gives us a path to our next step. So sine over cosine is tangent. Left side is tangent. Right side is equal to what? Negative one. So that becomes a lot more manageable, right? So we're com converting it into something that we can recognize. So tangent is going to be negative in the um, second and third quadrant, but we don't include 5 pi over 4 because 5 pi over 4 is outside the interval. So even if you had included. All right, those are all out. None of them are going to fall inside the interval that we're looking for between 0 and pi. Counseling meeting at one o'clock. Yeah, can I go. Mm -hmm. Okay, number twelve. More double angle identity. Everybody good with 11?
Okay, bring sign back in. Oh, and it says uh, these directions is for all values of X, so we'll do plus two pi n. Sine doesn't equal to two, but it can equal to negative one half in this third and fourth quadrants. Any questions with 12? OK, look at 13. Cosine x tan x minus 2 cosine squared equals negative 1. Any thoughts as to how you may want to start this? What's sticking out right now in this equation? Tangent. A tangent, right? Let's get that some let's get that in something that's easier to work with, right? So let's put that in a different form. And then we can kind of make a decision as to what we should do next. So you see that the tangent is gonna allow for sine over cosine to appear. The cosine disappears. I'm left with sine x minus 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And now, now that's going to help um, inform us what to do, right? What should we do then with that cosine squared? Yeah, change in terms of sine. So initially we don't see sine, but once we clear that up, once the dust settle, we're able to see, oh, this is just sine. If I have sine here and cosine squared, I know I can play with cosine squared. So that's going to lead me towards kind of um, targeting sine x as my trig function that I want to be using. Okay, distribute the negative two through. Do some cleanup, do some rearranging. And it should look familiar in terms of our factoring, right? Standard form.
yeah, first step is key, right? If you can nail down that first step, everything just kind of follows a similar pattern. But getting that first step down, sometimes it's the most challenging part. What do you do if you get the problem? Okay, a few more. 14, 15. How would you start 14? Yeah, we got that the diagram identity. That's a quick way to get everything in terms of sign and becomes a background problem like before. Was anybody still needing to look at number 13? Take the negative probability inside squared x and just put them up. Uh, let's see from this step here. Yeah, to here. Oh, no, 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 from the one above to the one down. Oh, uh, get the negative on it. right. Okay, so what I actually did was I moved everything over to, to the right uh, side. Okay. So that equals zero is kind of throwing you off. So that's so why you probably just want that higher exponent positive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you moved it, if you lift it on the left side, you just have to remember to change the sign of everything. So maybe, maybe uh, this is a bit more. Yeah, that's more straightforward what I did. I moved everything over to the right side. I want that first term to be positive. It just makes it easier when I back to the I don't want us I don't want us to forget about the multiple angle. So if you guys can find room for 16, we'll just do a quick one here. Um, so if you guys can find room to try number 16, we'll go through that after we go through 15. Fifteen. 
Let's bring everything over to one side. G, uh, GCF. Set each piece equal to zero. Tangent is equal to zero. Tangent of x equals to root three over three, which is really the same thing as one over root three. And we know one over root three is just variation of um, pi over six, right? First and third quadrant. Number 16. 2 sine 3x equals 1. We know we're not going to rely on uh, sum or difference identity. We're just going to rely on inverse trig. So we'll divide 2 first. And then we'll bring in inverse sine. Okay. Everybody good with 14 and 15? Does anybody still need to look at 15? Okay, 16. So divide by 2, bring in inverse sine. So now we're asking ourselves, when is sine of theta equal to 1 half? What would you say? Yeah, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Now we know we're going to be uh, shrinking those values, so we should extend out, right? How do we extend out? Add, add 2 pi, right? Add 2 pi, match common denominator, so let's use 12 pi over 6. So initially I have pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, but if I keep adding 12 pi over 6, I get 13 pi over 6. 17 pi over 6. Let's go a little further out. We may, that 3x may be shrinking them, these values quite a bit. So 25 pi over 6. 29 pi over 6. Hopefully that should be enough. Okay. We're going to take uh, see how far those values will shrink and hopefully we got everything between 0 and 2 pi. So dividing by 3 is same thing as multiplying by 1 third. OK, 
Okay, so let's see where these values land and see if we can identify everything between zero and two pi. Multiply the basically just changing all the denominators, right? All the denominators will just change to 18. So we're doing six times three. Do we keep all these values? Yeah, the last one is a little bit more than two, right? You know that 36 over 18 is two. So 37 over 18 is more than two. So it's nice to have one that you can eliminate. So you know that you didn't, you're, that you're not missing one. You didn't go far enough. Oh, this one we don't because we're only restricting between zero and two pi, so we can stop. Yeah. Okay, let me check our two pages. We'll do another review tomorrow and test Friday.